Good morning, I'm Marek Trinjani, the hematologist in the Charles University Prague. And I would like to discuss with you a case of the older, elderly patient with a diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. We diagnosed the diffuse large B-cell lymphoma in the lady in uh, 2009. She was 75 at that time. Uh, and this lady just uh, come, uh, came to us uh, with a swelling on the uh, right neck. When we examined her, we found uh, the tumor in the oral cavity or in the hypopharynx. Uh, and the biopsy revealed that this is a diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, the centrobrastic variant. The workup of this patient revealed that uh, there are the lymph nodes uh, on the neck, uh, that uh, then is the tumor mass uh, within her hypopharynx, which is up to 6.5 uh, uh, centimeters in the diameter. Uh, and uh, we end up uh, with these findings as the clinical stage uh, 2A because she had no systemic symptoms. From her medical history, she has no significant medical history. She passed the uh, surgery for benign ovarian tumor in her age uh, 32, and one year before the lymphoma diagnosis, uh, the uh, Barrett's esophagitis uh, was uh, diagnosed. Uh, the laboratory findings was uh, normal except the elevated LDH. Uh, beta 2 microglobulin was in the normal ranges. Uh, she was uh, HBV, HCV, and HIV negative. And uh, when we performed uh, her heart status, the echocardiography revealed that uh, the ejection fraction of left ventricle is quite good around the 60 uh, percent. They, they found a slight remodulation of the left ventricle, but uh, there were no uh, history of the ischemic heart disease, and uh, she, was, uh, she was quite good. The patients with a low uh, or low intermediate risk, it means a good risk diffuse large B-cell lymphoma patients, when they are treated with the arch of chemotherapy, the median survival is around the nine years. So we have decided uh, to use as a, our standard approach uh, the arch of treatment. We usually use the six cycles of arch of followed by the two cycles of the rituximab infusions. It uh, means up to eight infusions of uh, rituximab. A patient received uh, the therapy. She ends with the, in the December uh, 2009, and uh, she reached a complete reg uh, remission in terms of the morphological regression of the tumor as well as the PET negativity. It means that in the January 2010, the patient was in a PET negative complete remission. So her chance to be without uh, disease recurrence was quite high. Uh, the patient uh, felt well, and we all were optimistic about her future. Unfortunately, within three months after the last rituximab infusion, it means two months from the last uh, PET-CT examination, uh, she came up with a swollen of the, in the same region and uh, we found the involvement of the valerus ring again, and the diagnosis of the relapse was made. So we biopsy, uh, we biopsy it again, and the biopsy confirmed that this is a diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, uh, the same feature. The proliferation index was high, but it was up to 70% uh, of the cells. So we have a patient who relapsed within three months after the end of the treatment. So the question is what we can offer to her. She is 70, she was, at the time, she was already 76. She was quite good, she tolerated therapy well, but she progressed very quickly.
We discussed with her the options uh, and we decided to go to the standard salvage treatment. It, we, it means the platinum-based uh, regimen. That time we used the ICE uh, regimen, ephosphamide, carboplatin and etoposide. We discussed with her the radiotherapy or maybe possibly the high-dose treatment with the stem cell, autologous stem cell rescue. Uh, the patient uh, received uh, three cycles of RI, so rituximab, ice treatment, and uh, the PET restaging, PET CT restaging at the, uh, after, the, uh, th after the third cycle revealed the partial remission. All lymph nodes disappeared, uh, but there was a persistent tumor in the oropharynx, which was smaller but still PET positive. So we conclude that this is the uh, PET positive partial remission. And we discuss with the patient the, f the next steps and she decided not to go uh, for the high dose treatment with the stem cell transplantation. So we decided to um, continue with the same immunochemotherapy which should be consolidated uh, by the radiotherapy. The final restaging after the immunochemotherapy was a PET-positive partial remission. There was no further regression compared to the uh, intermediate uh, staging, and we uh, decided or we continue with the radiotherapy. The patient received the 40 grays of the uh, initially involved area. The radiotherapy was not very well tolerated. The patients develop um, grade two, three mucositis. We have to approach to the enteral nutrition because of her nutritional status. And we planned to perform the final restaging three months after the radiotherapy. Unfortunately, at that time, she developed the further progression at the same site of previous involvement. It means that uh, the patient have a second relapse, but not, at that point, she already uh, relapsed in the previous irradiated site. So um, her prognosis uh, at that time was not very good, definitely. Uh, she was uh, almost uh, 77 at that time. Uh, she had some problems, some nutritional problems, and uh, she refused the treatment. We talked to her with, uh, and to offer to her some uh, clinical studies but uh, she refused to participate in any clinical studies. She got the high-dose steroids and unfortunately she died within three months from the second, uh, second relapse.